right, welcome in everybody, Rock Hard Music. I am your host, Rob, and I got a bit of a red ass today, and I'll explain here. Um, it's no secret that uh, the bands we, you know, loved and grew up with in the 80s, the hair metal, classic rock, what have you, whatever the genre may be, has uh, pretty much, you know, gone by the wayside due to breakups or bands no longer being with, or members no longer being with us, whatever the case. <laughs> but there are still many of them that uh, continue on. Festivals or state fairs or casino tours or whatever they can fucking get in. And I'm growing more and more frustrated um, with the bullshit I'm hearing from some of these bands. Now, we got a uh, news story from uh, Warren's Joey Allen, and the headline reads, nothing's going on right now when it comes to making new Warren music. Now, honestly, I give two shits, right? Their music sucked. You know, without Janie Lane, Warrant has been not even a fucking shadow of themselves. They've been just a, a pretender, right? In name only. Uh, a wino. Warrant in name only. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, he speaks with... <laughs> in an interview with the Rim Shots with Sean... Rim shots. Might want to rethink that name. Uh, Warren guitarist Joey Allen spoke about whether there has been any talk of a follow up to 2017's Louder, Harder, <clears throat> Louder, Harder, Faster album. He said, as transcribed by Blabbermouth, new record? Question mark. I don't know. The last one was fun to make. And uh, producer Jeff Pilsen was fun to work with. And the one before that, 2011's Rockaholic with producer Keith Olsen, God rest his soul, was great and fun to do. Here we go. Here comes the excuses and the fucking wine fest. It's such an undertaking for us, and the return on making a record is minuscule. You know what I mean? And not everything's about money. <sighs> it's like, can we play it live? Well, you can, but people are just going to sit there and look at you like, where's Cherry Pie? Where's Uncle Tom's Cabin? Where's Down Boy? Where are those hits that I want to hear? And so you can't go out and play three or four or five new tunes, which would be, for me, thumbs up, I would dig to do that, but we have a responsibility to play the songs that people really want to hear too. So it's a double-edged sword. And that's what I mean when I say what's in it for us. It's not financially. The thing in it for us is to play new music, to create new music, to grow. Let's not be a nostalgia act. So I don't know if it'll be a new record, or if it'll be a song at a time or whatever, I'm sure sooner than later something will happen, but nothing's going on right now. <coughs> it's all I can fucking take. God's the honest truth. I'm so fucking t tired of hearing this bullshit. Um, right, Paul Stanley, same fucking excuse. Well... Why should we put out new music when people are going to be, well, where's Love Gun? Where's Shout It Out Loud? Motherfuckers. Um, first of all, every one of these fucking bands sold us for the, uh, the bill of goods that they're in it for the love of music. Right? It's their passion. It's in their blood. Second of all, if you're going to sit here and say, well, we could play four or five new tunes, but they're going to say, where's Cherry Pie? Where's Uncle Tom's Cabin? Where's Down Boys? You listed three songs off the first two albums. 
So then what was the point of dog eat dog? What was the point of ultraphobic? What was the point of belly to belly? What was the point of fucking louder, harder, faster? What was the point of fucking rockaholic? See where I'm going here, you jackass? You could have said that after Cherry Pie. Oh, well, why do another album? Because then they're just going to want to say, where's Down Boys? Where's 32 Pennies? Where's Cherry Pie? Where's I Saw Red? It is such a weak tit, wussy fucking art. First of all, fuck the fans. That's right. When it comes to selecting your live music, fuck the fans. As long as you play your absolute bare minimum handful of hits, you can plug anything else in there, and I fucking promise you, you may have a whiner here or there on the internet, but the fans are going to walk away fucking happy. And how the fuck are they supposed to get to know any of this fucking new music if you refuse to fucking play it live because someone may be butthurt that you didn't play enough old tunes? This is the same goddamn argument with Kiss that I've had forever, and no one's had a fucking comeback for me at all. Paul and Gene, oh, you, you got to play Deuce, you got to play Rock and Roll All Night, you got to play Shout It Out Loud, you got to play Love. No, you fucking don't. All right? God damn it. I'm having a fucking day. You play Rock and Roll Night, you play Detroit Rock City, nobody needs to hear Deuce ever, ever again. Thank God they're done. There are so many fucking songs in that Kiss catalog, in that mainstay playlist for 50 fucking years that were not goddamn radio hits. They were not fucking dial MTV fucking request hits. They were songs they chose to play in every fucking early tour to the point where they became staples and they were stuck. Warrant's no different. Cherry Pie, Uncle Tom's Cabin, Down Boys. Those are the three. I would say I would add to his three, Heaven, and I would probably, yeah, an argument. Yeah, I mean, sometimes she cries, right? A couple ballads. But that's it. You just said it, dude. You just listed three fucking songs. How long are your sets? Five minutes? You play 45 minutes even as a fucking opener. Right? Those three songs are going to eat up 15 minutes. Come on. It's a weak tit excuse. It's laziness. It's cheapness. What's in it for us? It's uh, a finale. Let's see. How does he say that? It's quite an undertaking for us. Uh, The return on the record is minuscule. And then to go on and say, and not everything's about money. Well, apparently... That was your number one talking point. The return on the record is minuscule. Welcome to the fucking world of today's music industry. Whether you're Taylor Swift, whether you're fucking Katy Perry, whether you're fucking the Jonas Brothers, whether you're Metallica, they're all on the same fucking boat. Streaming has fucking destroyed the profitability, profitability of new music. It's not about that ass bag. It's about keeping your name out there in some sort of relevant fashion. So you're not, as you even said, just a nostalgia act, which is all you fucking are. That's all Warrant has been since the passing of Janie Lane. And even before that, when Janie broke off and went and did his own thing. Let's face it, Janie Lane was fucking Warrant. He was the musical genius. He was the fucking lyrical genius. He was the fucking front man. He was the energy. He was the voice. He was warrant. So if this is the attitude you want to take, let's just go fucking small venue to small venue, playing the fucking classic hits, put out a couple of albums that nobody gives two shits about because it's not Janie Lane singing or doing the songwriting. So in in effect, the songs suck. You just want to live off the fucking name. That's it. Just just fucking admit it. Then I got no problem with this bullshit. But these lazy cop-out fucking excuses. Winger just did an entire album. One of the best albums I've heard. Their best album in their record catalog, as far as I'm concerned, in Winger 7. <coughs> All done at Kip's fucking home studio. 
Do you realize I could sit down right now with a couple hundred dollar DAW, plug in some fucking instruments, and make an entire fucking album, and it would sound very, very professionally done. I know a guy from a regional touring band back in the day, in his 50s, still making music, still recording in his home system, off freeware. Don't hand me this goddamn profit bullshit. You get these things mass-produced, the cost of fucking pressing the vinyl, or even going straight to fucking streaming service, you know, on fucking Spotify or whatever. The cost is minimal. The problem is laziness, effort, creativity. You've all become lazy slobs, the people who, who fucking throw these excuses out. All they want to do is do fly-in gigs because, God forbid, they're too fucking good to fucking, you know, travel town to town anymore, and they want to play... Oh, well, it's the economy of the gas and the fucking bus driver's expense and this and that. All right, well, Kiss used to jump in a fucking station wagon, right? Go out, buy a fucking chip all your money together, buy a fucking van, carry the bare necessities. Every fucking venue's got a PA system and a mixer and shit. Plug in and play. There are ways to do this shit. Don't hand me that crap. I am so tired of the expense excuse. I am so tired of the... Only everybody only wants to hear the hits. If that was the case, past album two, every band would have stopped because they would have had to play everything off the first two albums because that's what everybody wanted to hear. At some point in time, you need to just stand up and say, yeah, some people are going to be pissy that we didn't play fucking uh, Sure Feels Good to Me or something, you know, some obscure song. Kiss goes through it all the time, right? Everybody wants to hear obscure shit, get away, whatever. You got to, at some point, understand the bigger your catalog gets you're gonna have to pick and choose and i would argue that you only have to play ones that charted and why i say that is because that covers your bases because let's face it 60 to 70 percent of all fans are gonna buy an expensive ass concert ticket nowadays to see you because they are a fan of yours, which means they know most of your music, right? That other 30, 40% are going to be the straggle-ins, the jerk-off 21-year-olds, 18-year-olds who don't have a fucking clue, but they heard one song once, and they just want to go have a good time. Nothing wrong with that. But guess what? You play those songs they heard one time, which are going to be, obviously, the hits that were on radio, TV, used in movie soundtracks, however they got a hold of this music. And you're golden. They're not going to give a shit if you're playing things off Rockaholic or Ultraphobic. They got to hear Down Boys. They got to hear Cherry Pie. They got to hear Uncle Tom's Cabin. They got to hear Heaven. That's why they went. They don't know anything else, no matter what album you pull it up, dickhead. I just don't fucking... Just be honest. We're old. We're fat. We're fucking lazy. We still like the part-time income paycheck and the ability to just jump on a cheap flight, fly into some fucking shed, stay at the fucking hotel that's, you know, linked to the casino or wherever you are for free, drink some beers, go out and jerk off to the same 10 songs you played for the last 30 fucking years, go home and collect your paycheck. Just fucking be honest. Stop giving me the excuses because they're not fucking valid. Certainly, this is not like making an album where you had to have record companies, you know, fucking float you advances to pay for all your fucking producers and production. and everything. This is home studio shit nowadays. Pretty much everybody does that, right? It's not that expensive. As long as you know your way around a computer and a DAW, if you don't, hire someone. One fucking person. Run all your fucking sound for you through the fucking computer. All you got to do is sit in a room with some cheap-ass soundproof fucking foam pads on the fucking wall, and there you go. Right? Not hard. Stop with the, I don't want to make new music because nobody wants to hear it crap. I have not met one fucking person. And, and I'd like someone to show me who out there knows somebody 
who says their favorite band in the world, who's been out for 20, 30, 40 years. Nah, I don't want to hear new material from them. Who fucking says that? Nobody. Your fans, the ones have followed you from day fucking one, have spent their money on your tickets, on your t-shirts, on your patches, on your fucking albums. Dedicate, put tattoos on their fucking body to honor you, to show respect to their favorite band. You think they don't want to hear new music? It is un. Stop worrying about the fucking dime a dozen fucking just popping in to have a good time, people. They don't care what you play. They don't care. If you want to play five songs from Warren's fucking first three albums and 10 songs or another five songs, whatever, all brand new material, they're never going to know the fucking difference, those dipshits. Because they're only there to hear a couple songs. That's all they fucking know. There are not many people nowadays, believe me, I know Lyft. I did Lyft for over a year, all right? And my car was always popular, decked out Cadillac XTS, killer fucking sound system, always had my music in, which consisted of 80s, 70s and 80s pop and rock music and metal. Why? Because that's the most popular music there ever has been and ever will be. It spans all fucking generations' musical taste. And these 21-year-old can't-hold-their-liquor punks would get in the fucking car, and everyone would be like, oh, my fucking dad plays this. I love this song. Can't name another song by the band if they're even able to name the band, but they love the song. So the moral of the story is they love the song because it was a popular song by a popular band at the time, and as long as you pay, play that popular song, they're fine. Everything else, they're going to have a good time anyway. Your diehards will want to hear the new music. So where's the fucking problem? Who are these people that are coming up to Paul Stanley saying, oh, I just want to hear Love Gun, so I don't want to hear nothing off Monster? I don't either, but that's his fucking excuse. But who comes up and tells him that? Are they reading fucking chat boards? Because I guarantee you, those are the bare minimum fucking people of your fandom. So who, who who's who's coming out there and telling Joey Allen, oh, where's Uncle Tom's cabin? Where's Cherry Pie? Where's Don Boys? Like they've ever not played him. He's assuming. He's making an assumption based on every other band's same whining talking point. So the moral of the story is your diehards want more music from you. Your diehards will not be upset to hear that music live. Your diehards will be just fine hearing just your, your minimal amount of hits and new material. The people who have no fucking idea who you are, except for a couple songs, are going to be happy when you play those couple songs. Everything after that, gravy. They couldn't tell you if it was on the first, second, fourth, fifth, seventh, or tenth album. And they couldn't care less. They're really not your fans. They're a fan of one song, and they'll have a good time because they're nine out of ten times drinking beer and just out to have a good time. That's it. It's that simple. I just And then to have the gall to say, let's not go out there and be a nostalgia act. What the fuck do you think you are? The moment Janie Lane exited stage left, you became a nostalgia act. Bottom fucking, you cannot replace Janie Lane. Skid Row cannot replace Sebastian Bach. You can get all the goddamn dead ringers vocally you want. Great White cannot replace Jack Russell. Nor could Kiss replace Paul Stanley. Nor could Aerosmith replace Steven Tyler. You just can't do that with nine out of ten fucking bands and continue to have the same success or more success, ACDC being a rare exception. But I argue that's because Bon Scott died so early on before ACDC actually blew up in this country that by the time Johnson came in and Back in Black came out, that's when they hit their stride. Now, if Bon Scott would have done Back in Black and then died, and then Johnson came out, we'd be having a whole different story on the success of uh, ACDC post Bon Scott. But yeah, there are exceptions out there. But for the most part, no. 
especially when that lead singer in Warren's case is responsible for everything. It wasn't even his band to begin with. He wasn't even the original singer. But he was the genius songwriter. He was the voice. He was the front man. He was the energy. He was everything for that band. So once you lost him, you knew your fucking days were numbered to begin with. You should have just disbanded and called yourself something else. Especially if you want to play this this crybaby card of, oh, they want to hear. You realize everything you said they want to hear? Janie Lane. So you should have known that when Janie Lane left Warren. You damn sure should have known it when he died and there was no chance of him coming back to Warren. At that point in time, Warren should have ceased to fucking exist. You all could have went out, formed a new band, wrote all new music, and that's all you could play, and that's all you'd be expected to play by your fans if that's what you're worried about, because that's your band's music. You are a nostalgia act right now. You were a nostalgia act when you put out Rockaholic. You were a nostalgia act when you put out this fucking louder, harder, faster, which I haven't even listened to because Rockaholic sucks so bad. I'm just tired of the excuses. And if, if, if you want to come out and say, you know what? I'm done with that shit. I'll go out and play some, you know, festivals or whatever for a paycheck. I'll respect you way more for that. But lying, copping out. All of these bands seem to go to that fucking, nobody wants to hear new music. There's no money in new music. It's so expensive. No, it, it's not. It's not expensive to make your own music. Check YouTube sometimes. There are a million fucking bands out there who make their fucking music right out of their goddamn basement. Sounds fine. You got the name recognition. Do something with it. Because right now you are exactly what you said you don't want to be, a nostalgia act. You stop writing music now, and you keep going out and touring, how the fuck do you think that's going to change? You're already in that mold. And the more you just go out and tour off your past, you cement that mold. Makes no sense. The double talk in this fucking interview is just beyond fucking ludicrous. Just admit you're lazy. You have no creative ideas whatsoever. But you want the paycheck. You want the easy fucking money. Just be honest. Because that's what it is. You think Janie Lane wouldn't be writing new music right now? Are you fucking high? The man was a creative genius. Paul and Gene got an excuse. They're in their goddamn 70s. They've done this for 50 years. They got an excuse to say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm done with that shit. You guys got no excuse. Stop touring. That's why I said in the thumbnail, just fucking retire. I mean, how are you any different than some cover band, you know, that goes out and plays five or six fucking, you know, five band fucking bills somewhere for 3,000 people? It's just, what's the point anymore? The paychecks are not that good doing these fly-in dates. You said you're not, man, unless you're living off of royalties. You can do that when you retire, too. Why are you going out there and continuing to charade, looking older and fatter and balder, playing songs that you can no longer fucking play well with a singer who can't even come close to the fucking sound of Janie Lane to do these songs justice? Just quit. If you don't want to put anything else new, quit. It's that fucking easy. All right, I'm just tired of it. In a day and age where music sucks so fucking bad, and I have had to go over and fucking start looking at things from Sweden and Germany and fucking Denmark and all these places to find something with a little bit of musical ability that doesn't sound like fucking Shinedown singer or Creed singer or that blasé fucking no voice, no fucking passion bullshit that this country produces. We could desperately use some good new music from bands who know how to do it. But apparently most of them have checked the fuck out. Unfortunately, by checking out, that doesn't mean they checked out, hit the golf course, and are living their lives. Checked out means they're just touring on the same old fucking songs they played for 40 years and have damn little interest in putting on a show, keeping up their appearances, or putting out music. Whatever. I ceased to be a Warrant fan as soon as Janie Lane left in the first fucking place, but this is just another article, another interview with another asshole making excuses. So, 
vent over. Until next time, thanks for watching.